Good morning and welcome to Digital Coffee, the social media news you need to know this week. I'm going to take my hoodie off. I'm feeling like I want to take my hoodie off. It's off. That's as far as the strip tease goes, okay? Don't think that that's what this Facebook Live is about. Now, I'm back in the office this week, which means for those of you that watched last week, I was live from Dublin, Smithfield Square in Dublin, and we had a few interruptions. We had some wind that blew my coffee away and we had an angle grinder. And this week, I can almost guarantee there will be no angle grinder and my tea is in a mug. So it's not gonna blow away. This is some sort of freak thing going on. The one thing that might happen is I've just seen the postman go by because as I described to some of you before, I can see directly out my window when I'm talking to you. So behind me is my office, in front of me is my window, and I just saw the postman go by. I'm waiting for an important letter. So if you suddenly see me run off and disappear and leave my microphone behind, that will be why. But barring a bit of special post, I'm here for the next half an hour sharing social media news. I can see a few of you are joining us now, so hello. Tell me who you are. What are you drinking? I'll tell you what I'm drinking. You know what, when I, when I did this, when I got this earlier, I thought, well, I'll have time to make coffee. Hey, Kate, I'll have time to make coffee before my Facebook Live, but I didn't. So I've got half a cup of cold tea in a pretty non-sexy mug. That's what I'm drinking. And this is kind of my comfort mug. It's kind of big and warm. You've got tea too, Kate, good to see that. And if I turn it around this way, I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up at all. But, oh God, there's the postman. I told you this was gonna happen. Hey, Kate, hey, Sinead, hang on there a second. Keep everyone entertained while I uh, talk to the postman. Just see if he knocks on the door first, will we? No, it just went through the door. I'm still here, that's great news. <laughs> okay, right, so on this mug, it's very, very faded, but it actually says lion's tea. Now, when I first arrived in Ireland, there were two choices for tea. There was lion's tea and there was Barry's tea. And for some reason, I picked up lion's tea. So Kate, Sinead, are either, oh, Sinead, you're drinking Earl Grey tea. That's so classy. Um, do we have a, uh, uh, a lion's or a Barry's preference, Kate, Sinead? Because I used to like lion's tea, but do you know what I'm drinking in here? Barry's. Okay, okay, enough of the tea talk. I'll just take a sip. Let's get on to <laughs> the social media news, because that's why you're here. I think I may have lost a viewer talking about tea too much. Okay, so here's what we've got. This is the first appearance ever of WhatsApp. We're going to talk about hashtags, which isn't, well, it's not news, but it's an interesting study that came out this week. And Barry's, Kate, yes, you're there with me. In fact, Barry's is the real Irish tea. Lions is apparently made in the UK. Okay, um, then we've got Twitter, and I put a plus one there because there's so much Twitter news. Um, Facebook and some money around it. That should have really been the Messenger one, because I've got some news to do with Facebook Messenger and chatbots, which you know I'm a big fan of. This is um, supposed to be Tweet Deck, so more Twitter news. I forgot, you know, with all the excitement last week with that angle grinder, my coffee blowing away, and the embarrassment of being in Smithfield Square, I forgot to share my cool tool last week. We've got some stuff about YouTube. We've got Facebook Live and a big thumbs up next to it because there's something cool going on there. Um, Instagram news, more Instagram news, and a cup of tea. Okay. Are you ready? Let's start. I'm going to have to grab my notes because I had to make extensive notes this week. There was so much to talk about. But we're going to start with WhatsApp. Okay, so what's going on with WhatsApp? This is back to, this is the most exciting thing that's ever happened. The war between Instagram and Snapchat or Facebook and Snapchat. So, right, 
We all know that Instagram stole Snapchat's idea with the stories. We all know that they've added some on Facebook some messenger things that make it a little bit more Snapchatty. Now, Facebook have taken their new property. When I say new, it's the one they've not really meddled with yet. WhatsApp. And they've made it a bit Snapchatty. So what they've done is they've enabled people, it's not that much, but they've enabled people to upload photos, um, to add emojis to those photographs and to scribble on them. So it's very Snapchatty. I'm going to find the image so you can see how similar it is. And the really interesting thing here is when you use um, Facebook, the emojis that they put on Facebook are a specific emoji set. So I think I've shown you before that emojis can look quite different depending on which emoji set you're using. So normally Facebook uses the iOS emoji set, but for this, they're using the one that they use on Twitter and Snapchat. So they've made a deliberate move to make this look exactly the same. So this is, I will link, oh, just closed it up. I will link to this underneath, but here you can see just try and frame out the window. This one here, I was going to say the one on the left and the right, but it's flipped around. This one here is WhatsApp and this one here is Snapchat. See how similar they are? In fact, identical. So the war continues. It's not over yet as if we thought it was. And um, one thing I also forgot to talk about last week in that whole mess of angle grinders and things was that Snapchat are developing augmented reality glasses. So this isn't like your Oculus Rift, which is your actual virtual reality. You put those on and you're in like a computer generated world. These are things that you look a bit like Google Glass. So you look at the world through them and it kind of enhances it. So the idea is that you might walk around with these glasses on, you'll see a person and if they're on Snapchat, you'll see their snap code above their head. It looks like it. That's just a complete guess. It's like when these iPhone things I talk about, but that would be quite cool, right? That might bring me back to Snapchat. Moving on. That was the war. Let's see what else I've got. So, all oh, hashtags. Now, during the week um, in my newsletter, if you subscribe, I had a little bit of a rant about bots, as in robots, on um, Instagram. Sorry, 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 my thing is talking to me. Do I want to block Kate McQuillan? No, I do not want to block. Sorry, Kate. Um, where was I? Hashtags, yes. So I had a little bit of a rant about bots on Instagram. I did, but it's full of them. The spam bots that follow you and tell you, oh, get a thousand followers today. There's all the apps and tools that we can use to follow and unfollow people automatically. There's ones that send out little conversations. Um, will I permanently have a nice Snapchat filter if, oh, that's an interesting one. You know that really nice, this is the one thing Instagram misses, that really nice Snapchat filter that makes me look 10 years younger. It would be good, wouldn't it? If, every, if I could persuade everyone to re wear augmented reality glasses, I'd always look 10 years younger. I like that idea. So there's loads of spam bots on Instagram, basically, all over the place. And um, they also appear on Twitter. And this study is specifically about hashtags and Twitter. And up until earlier this year, I didn't really use hashtags for promotion. I would use hashtags if I was at an event to see what was going on, if I was watching a particular television show, if there was a Twitter chat or something that I wanted to get involved in. And earlier this year, I thought, look, I'm gonna give this hashtag thing a go. So when I promote my own content, I tend to use hashtags along with it. I think I went away for a moment there. I've devised a strategy to um, keep that, that, those hashtags going out. This week I stopped using them. Why? There was a study, and let me grab my notes again for that one. The first thing I noticed actually when I started using hashtags like that was I was immediately getting added to hundreds of lists. So digital marketing professionals, Facebook livers, or whatever, which was really a that had never happened to me before. I only got added to real lists in the past. Let me find this statistics. Right. The study, which I will link to below, or I'll link to a link to the study, studied 11,000 tweets over three days. They found that 35% of tweets 
tweeting using hashtags were real. Only 35%. The rest were coming from bots. 57% were coming from questionable accounts. So they would be people who had unusual follow unfollow patterns and were promoting unusual content. 7% came from what they call zero spam accounts. And zero spam accounts have no followers, but retweet lots. Why do people do this? I haven't got a clue, but it's there. So they retweet and share hundreds, thousands of bits of content, but they have no followers. Um, they were analyzing the big hashtags. So they weren't analyzing people that were doing Twitter chats or you know, using event hashtags, just kind of big ones like advertising and digital marketing digital marketing being one that would be on my list of ones I have been using. They found that all this activity generated 10.5 million false likes and 10.8 million false tweets and retweets. So Twitter, basically, when you're using hashtags, you are feeding the machine that is filling Twitter with irrelevant conversation. Yeah, Sinead, I've been using them and I've just stopped. I just went, okay, it's extra hassle for me to use hashtags. So I have to go research them and I have to, you know, put them in my tweets. So for me, let's see if it makes a big difference to my traffic. It probably will make a difference to my reach, but if all I'm reaching is bots, then what's the point? That's, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, on to, dun, 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 that was hashtags. This is actually proper Twitter news. I've got two bits of Twitter news because you can see Twitter plus one. Actually, kind of with TweetDeck, I've got three. But let's start with Twitter. Let me find a bit of Twitter news because, of course, I didn't put them in order. Ah, on Monday, probably, Twitter are finally going to bring in those changes they talked about earlier in the year where you can get more into your 140 characters. Now, apparently, they've already implemented some. I knew you could retweet yourself. I gave that a go recently. Seems odd, but there is times when you might want to use it. Apparently, they've also introduced, though I did not know this, the bit where every, every conversation with an app mention in, rather than you having to put a full stop before a name or whatever, it's going to go into the news feed. The two bits they definitely hadn't introduced yet were having... Um, 22 characters, I think it is, that if you put an image or if you put a video into your tweet, it would normally take up 23 characters. That is going to be gone, which is great. That's great because it's always hard to fit everything into 140 characters, any extra leeway we have. It doesn't apply to links. A link is still going to take 23 characters, which is down with that sort of thing. I would have preferred they'd done it for links, but there you go. The other thing they're changing is that you will be able to tag users. And you'll be able to tag, I think it's up to 50 users in a tweet, actually using their at username, not like tagging them in a photo, which you can do already. You're actually going to be able to do that without it taking up any of your characters. So if I was tweeting you, your username wouldn't count towards my characters, which is good in one way because more characters, yay! But sometimes already I get caught up in these like Twitter loops that somebody will tweet a something they want to share with a group of people, whether it's they want me to share it or if they're just saying hi, which is lovely, okay, that's great, got no problem with that and they'll tag all these people and then you know what happens? People retweet that and every time that happens I get a notification and suddenly I can't see any conversation in my Twitter feed anymore. I can just see all the retweeting. So I'm just wondering, is there going to be an increase in that? Sorry, my phone keeps talking to me. I tell it not to, but, you know, phones are fickle things. Anyway, it's all happening on Monday. So this time next week, I may have a better formed opinion about that. I'm not going to go into the second bit of Twitter news. I will save that because what have I got here? This is kind of exciting for retailers. I don't think we've got any retailers watching, but just in case... It's Facebook, it's chatbots, and it is currently only in the United States, but you will be able to buy and pay for something directly through Facebook Messenger talking to a chatbot. Even saying that, I'm kind of going, would I trust, my, trust that? Would I trust that going to be a legitimate transaction? But I'm sure there's going to be lots of things in place. So the first thing you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to strike up the conversation with a chatbot, shop chatbot, for example. 
and you can say oh I want to see your shirts in this size and they'll show you that and when you choose the one they'll say there'll be a buy button you click the buy button and you check out you won't need to put your credit card info in you actually do that on a Facebook level rather than on a transaction level looks kind of cool um, the other thing you'll be able to do so they're going to enhance this that they'll put an ad They'll have an ad unit and when people click buy on it they'll be brought into the chatbot messenger so you'll be able to buy directly there so it's less friction less friction between somebody wanting to buy and actually buying because we know there's lots of things that get in the way of us making the purchase we want to we might go oh, I don't know if I can afford that right now I know I was going to contribute to a fund it campaign recently and I was all up for it Do you know fund it doesn't take PayPal I don't, didn't have my credit card handy, so that went out the window. I like this. It will take friction out of all that sort of stuff. It'll be interesting. It'll be good for retailers. Why are Facebook doing it? Because they want to keep us on their site. They don't want us going off to our websites, which, you know, love it or hate it, that's the way it is. Moving on to... Anyone use TweetDeck? TweetDeck seems like a thing out of the old ages for me. TweetDeck used to be its own tool, but now Twitter own it. It's a kind of a bit like Hootsuite. It's a different way of viewing your Twitter stream. So you can see, you can have columns that represent each section of your Twitter stream. You use it, Sinead. I'm a Hootsuite person, so, um, but I do dip in now and then because there's features you can get on TweetDeck that you can't get on Hootsuite. So you have different columns for different things. Um, you can see your home feed, your app mentions, you can set up Twitter lists there. And they've added a new feature to TweetDeck now that you can set up a search column and search for people in a specific location or tweets from a specific time phase, which is, you've been able to do on Hootsuite for a long time, um, but it's a really good feature. The downside is it used to be a lot easier to find tweets by location on Twitter and they've made it harder and harder over the years and I'm not sure why but I do know that people need to geolocate their tweets to appear in Twitter search rather than maybe I don't know a guesstimate of where they are or where they've said they are in the world so not many people do that I don't do that so that means a lot of my tweets wouldn't appear in that feed however it is really useful for local businesses that want to see what people are tweeting in the local area or talk to people in the local area, the conversations that are going up. If there's people that need what you've got that happen to be nearby, it can be a really useful tool. I'm definitely going to go have another look at it in TweetDeck and add it to the list of features that I go to TweetDeck specifically for. TweetDeck owned by Twitter, really easy to set up now, by the way. Okay. Let's go, will we go for the tool? Because I forgot it last week. My cool tool recommendation of the week. I'm all about productivity at the moment. I'm trying to squeeze an awful lot of work into a very short time. It's work-life balance. I'm sitting for at least an hour not doing work in the evenings before I go to bed. It's fabulous. So one of the tools I tried, and I mentioned this if you saw my fight procrastination video, is Rescue Time. And this is, um, you download it onto your computer and it monitors where you're spending your time. Even by adding this, I started going, I know I spend too much time on Facebook, so I'm not gonna let Rescue Time call me out on that. So I stopped using Facebook so much. At the end of the day, you can see where you spent your time. It will tell you how much time was productive. It will tell you how much time was unproductive. You should spend a bit of extra time setting up which websites are productive or not though because I'm not a big one for YouTube. I don't watch a lot of YouTube because I have a YouTube channel and a vlog but it's not something I spend an awful lot of time on and I've been preparing a YouTube course for the last week and a half and it's been counting the time. Obviously I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube. That time is unproductive so you do need to teach it. It's just great though. It really does call you into check. It really does. It really has helped me be more focused on doing the work and not get distracted by things that are going on elsewhere. Rescuetime.com. Go check it out. Hey, Marion. Thanks for joining in. It's absolutely amazing. That was my Dublin 4 accent. Right. Instagram, YouTube or Facebook Live. So I'll go for an I, a Y or an F, I, Y or F. 
for my next bit of news. Just while you do that, I'm going to get another cup of tea. Well, not another cup, another sip for my cup of tea. We've got one vote for Instagram, I, Y or F. I'm desperately trying to remember what the Instagram news is. There's actually loads of Instagram news this week. Y for YouTube. I, hey Eleanor. I for Instagram, with two for Instagram now. Anyone for Facebook? I'm gonna go with I. If I go with I, just put my T down. If somebody else comes in with a vote, we'll change it. I made a really poor effort at the Instagram logo this week. The constant struggle to draw it. There you go. Instagram for Marion as well. Okay, it's a definite Instagram news. There's actually a couple of bits of Instagram news, so I'll give you them together rather than me forgetting to tell you the next bit, which may happen. The first thing is <coughs> Instagram comment moderation, which I have talked about here before. I talked about it a few weeks ago when it looked like they were testing it with some celebrities. This is something you've been able to do on Facebook for a while. You can put in words that you want comments that use those words to be automatically blocked from your Facebook page. And you have the option of those being just general swear words, or you can add your own block list as well. They just introduced this for everyone on Instagram and I've screen grabbed where you can find it. So this means if you do get abusive comments on a regular basis, you can get rid of this. I'm wondering though, can I teach it to get rid of those spam bot comments? I'm just thinking if I could find some sort of consistency, maybe the word great, but I'm sure I'd just miss out a whole load of comments that should go there as well. Right, so you go into your settings, so the little cog on the top right hand side, and when you go in you need to scroll all the way down and click into comments, and when you do, this is what you'll see. I know it's backwards for you. Now the first one at the top, that's just a toggle. You can toggle that on and it will block inappropriate comments. So anything that it thinks through its own algorithm and system that it thinks is inappropriate. I might switch that on. Maybe that'll get rid of the bots. And the second section down, you don't have to even switch that on or you can have both switched on, is where you can put in words. Words and actually emojis as well that you want any comments that have those will just be blocked out. And this is interesting because this is where people first got wind that this was happening because Taylor Swift, I was just jealous because she was going out with that good looking bloke from the um, That Good TV show, Tom Higgleston. Yeah. Anyway, Taylor Smith Swift was having some battle with Kim Kardashian. Anyone that knows me knows I vaguely know who those people are. Um, in a way, people were calling Taylor Swift a snake everywhere. I think Kim started it off, or maybe Kanye. I'm even saying his name wrong. I'm just sounding rubbish now, so I'll stop. Um, but somebody started it off and suddenly Taylor was getting inundated. Awesome and thumbs up. Awesome, that's the word. I, I block awesome. Eleanor here has suggested we block the word awesome. I think that's a brilliant idea. Okay, so um, all of a sudden Taylor's Instagram was full of all these comments with snakes and they noticed that, well, actually she must have some sort of filter because one day they were there, the next day it was actually impossible to post the snake as a comment on Taylor Swift. So you might think about that if you get a lot of comments, maybe block awesome, that'll get rid of some of your spam comments, maybe just hide inappropriate comments in a way. I think that could be well worth doing because you know what happens, if one person jumps in and says something nasty and other people join in and it becomes in and even if they're joining in to defend you it just becomes this long conversation that you really wish wasn't happening at all so that's my first bit of instagram news my second bit of instagram news is they've just done a little update to stories it came up last night <laughs> this is my illustration of stories i have no idea what i was thinking in fairness it was quite late last night when i was drawing i think that's supposed to be a phone and I think I've, that's supposed to represent a story I've scribbled on. Um, so there's been a couple of updates just to make sure I don't miss any. We'll look at my notes again. So much to remember. Here it is down the bottom, I saw it. Firstly, you can set it up in the settings that I just shown you as well. There's a thing about now you can save your stories to your camera roll. So anything you upload into your stories will also save to your camera roll. That's really useful. 
Incidentally, did you know that you can upload photos into your story and videos into your story on Instagram once they were taken in the last 24 hours, which is something you can't do on Snapchat. That's really cool. <laughs> Thanks, Marion. Now, my smiling mug is what keeps me happy. It's always the last thing I draw. Um, so that's really interesting. If you wonder how to do that, there's a tip coming up on my Instagram this afternoon or on my Facebook page this afternoon, a video tip showing you how to do that. You can now save them as well, automatically. You can mute stories from users. So that's the thing. I had this problem on Snapchat. There were people I was following, not mentioning anyone, happy pair. I love the happy pair, but on Snapchat it was too much. I couldn't mute them there, but if I was following them on Instagram and they were doing the same, I am following them on Instagram, but I don't watch their stories, I can just make sure that it doesn't appear in my feed. I've got the option to mute them. So then what it does is it just pushes them to the end of my feed. So if you're watching through your Instagram stories in chronological order, and have, instead of having to stop and go on to the next one, it will just be gone. And the third one is, God, coloured text. They're letting us have coloured text. You can have coloured text on your Instagram stories now. I, I don't use stories very much, but I'm tempted to use it today just to have coloured text. So that's my Instagram news. Nobody voted for Facebook, but you're getting Facebook next. That's what you're getting, because this is really exciting for me and anyone else that's using Facebook Live, because... Actually, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this, but they're rolling it out so you can do Facebook Live from your desktop or your laptop rather than just your phone. And it looks like it's gonna be full 16 by nine rather than this square format that we're in. I'm kind of attached to this square format, I have to say. I'm attached to doing it on my phone. But of course, when I'm out and about, I still will be. In fact, to get my computer up to this complimentary height with this lovely background would be kind of hard. However, there's lots of things. I've got this beautiful microphone that helps my voice sound sexy that would be an asset for me to have. So let's just say I'll be trying it out when it arrives and we'll see. You can help me decide, should I just keep doing it from my phone or should I use desktop? Interesting one though, I think we're gonna see loads more live. I've seen a lot more exploding since they've made it obvious to just regular Facebook users how to do it. <clears throat> Which leaves me with, I'm just making sure I haven't forgotten anything. There was another bit of Twitter news. Don't let me forget. If, you, if I start saying goodbye, prod me. Okay, YouTube, and this is something else we've mentioned in the part, past, but it was called background or behind the scenes in development. Now they're actually going to roll it out. And what it is, it's going to be called YouTube Community. And they're turning YouTube into more of a social network, not just about video. They're rolling this out now to some power users. I'm going to put a link underneath. If you follow it, you can see the users you can follow so that you can see how it works. And basically, people are going to be able to put up other updates other than video and share them to their community. And you're going to be able to see those in your subscriptions feed. You may also get push notifications about them. So I'm thinking, you know, Google has constantly failed at creating a social network. Apart from YouTube, which, you know, it is a social network, work, but we wouldn't really see it that way. So this is another maybe try from them to have a social network until they buy Twitter, of course, which we know they will, because I said that would happen, so it's definitely going to happen. So um, that's going to be a really interesting one. I'm going to follow a couple of users on the list of the beta testers and see if I like it or if I don't like it. So you may hear complaints from me in the future. The other bit of Twitter news I really don't want to miss out. I'm going to show you my Twitter bird again because he takes me ages to draw and that pen's running out. So soon Twitter bird will be a different colour. Twitter. I just need to have find the, the right image for this. Do, 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 going the wrong way. La, 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 la. I just took a match as I was when I find this. Oh, that's the Insta. Oh, there was another bit of Instagram news. Don't let me forget that. Okay. Um, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Here it is. Twitter are rolling out customer service tools. Um, and they're interesting. Um, you'll be able to set it up so that you can say this Twitter account is a customer service account and give it some information. And once you've done that, it's going to give you 
some extra bits and pieces on your screen. So this is an example from T-Mobile. And the first thing you can see, the first circle at the top there says when people are responsive. So this is similar to your responsive on Facebook, except it's not saying you're very responsive or responds quickly. It's actually putting in the hours that you're able to man the customer service account, which is so useful because I see people having to put this in their bio, but it's right there, right in front of people. They've also added this message button. So it's a lot easier rather than having to go, hey, O2, what's the deal with? on a public tweet, you can see that you can message them directly without them having to follow you. So I think this will be huge. And when you think about it, that's where people go for their customer service, Twitter more so than Facebook, I think. So it's very clever. Let me just, cause there's more to it than that. No, no, there is more to it than that. Um, oh yes, the other thing is, I should really look at my notes cause that would help. The other thing that they're going to do is Twitter customer service um, is that when you search for an account, so if I wanted to tweet O2 or T-Mobile in this case and go, you know, oh, but they've got five accounts, which one do I use? When I start searching for T-Mobile, it will point out the account that is the customer service account. And it says something like offers support underneath it. So within the search results, I can just click on the relevant one, the one that I need to get in contact with. I think this is one of the smartest things Twitter has done in a long time. They've really looked at why people use Twitter. They're making it easier for businesses. They're taking the conversation out of the timeline Nice one, Twitter. Okay, the thing that I forgot to tell you about Instagram, and it was only when I was scrolling through, it is kind of cool if you use Instagram ads or if you're considering using them in future. I'm not a big fan, although I do think they can be effective. You just have to have the right audience and do them really well. But they've added, out a, f added a few new features to the Instagram ads. I'm just gonna show you these. So one of the problems I have with Instagram ads is currently it's kind of important. Should you open a second account, Kate, for Twitter? Sorry, I missed that. Um, I think if you're not getting many customer queries already, no, I don't think so. I think this is pretty much for the businesses that would get a lot of customer queries. So I imagine e-commerce sites, for example, if we're looking at small businesses might have that. Um, obviously big businesses, it's really gonna work for. Um, for you, Kate, if you wanted to enable this, you don't need to open a second account. You can just enable it on your existing account, which will also help because if somebody does want to get in contact with you regarding your services, they can see, oh, that she's going to be able to answer me between this time and this time. So um, I wouldn't say for a small business you need a second account. My problem with Instagram ads is people don't really know what to do when they see your ad. So I've run a few um, advertising just blog posts. I haven't tried any hard selling yet for myself. And the one thing I found is because it's really little underneath, which is learn more, people don't tend to click it. So what's going to happen now is that when you scroll by, it's actually going to go blue like that, which is a lot stronger call to action. So this is for a download. I think, oh, let me increase that so you can see it. So on the right, on this side, because it's the wrong way around, this is what it looks like at the moment, and this is what it will look like in the new way. I think that's good because if you are paying for ads and if you do want people to click through, you need to make it a little bit more obvious. The second thing they're doing is they're going to add context to it. When you're clicking through to someone else's site, they're going to add context. So this is an example. Jasper's Market is always the example of Facebook use when it's their, their test account. So you can see here, if you're linking through, it won't just say learn more, it'll give you an idea, as in the person that's looking at the ad, of what they're clicking through too. So find out more at jaspersmarket.com. You know by clicking that that you're going to a website. So I kind of like that too. I like it's more obvious, although there are obvious downsides to that as well. And the third one is video ads. And video ads, and this is interesting because there's this whole thing, you know, you're paying for a video view, how do they count a view, blah, blah, blah. What's nice here is when somebody unmutes the video, that's when they're gonna show you a link preview. So the first one here, this is what the video looked like. If you decide you want to listen to it, 
you click the unmute button and then underneath you'll get the link preview. And the idea is you can keep watching the video and see what it is that they're selling in the same screen, which I kind of like. Now the downside, people are saying this is going to look more like an ad. So will users be less inclined to look at what you're doing? I don't know the answer to that, but I do think that ads should look like ads. I do think, well, I think you need to be not look like ads, like buy my stuff, but I do think it's important that if you're paying for it, it's very clear, which could bring us onto a whole thing about influencers. But you know, look, I'm over time already. Um, so that's the news for this week. I'm gonna go off and make a cup of coffee, but before I do, and before you do, don't forget on my small business bloggers group, which you can find at spiderworking.com forward slash group, or you can search for small business bloggers at 10 a.m. every Friday, we have a comment thread. So go post your latest blog post, or it doesn't even have to be your latest one, one that you would like to get comments on in that thread. Find someone else who's left a link and you can comment on theirs. And I, I've been delighted with the results so far. I'm getting loads of comments on the posts I'm putting there. So don't forget to do that. Until next week, don't forget to put the date in your diary, put it in your phone, set a reminder, 9.30 a.m. on Friday. I'm gonna be in London. So we'll be relying on Wi-Fi from the Airbnb. I'll see you then. Goodbye.